in the studio with me from CompuScan uh, talking about their quarterly report, which has just been released as Jakubus XD. And Jakubus, how are we doing? Are we, still, are we still loading up our credit cards and other forms of credit? Unfortunately, yes, we are. But uh, fortunately, lending is stable. So we are seeing some increases in vehicle lending and short-term unsecured lending. Mm. So those are loans, loans less than or equal to 8,000 and with terms of less than or equal to six months. In general, delinquency is still a bit concerning. We are seeing that only 42% of individuals are not in arrears on any accounts. 13% are one to two months in arrears. About 24% are three or more months in arrears. Uh, about 10% have adverses and 10% have judgments. So in other words, of the 23 million people in South Africa that are credit active, someone is more likely to be over-indebted than not. Mm. Sounds a bit messy, Google. Uh, very messy. And I think often, Jacobus, yeah, there's a misconception here that uh, it's the lower income earners that are more at risk of this, or even the middle class. But uh, from your data, uh, who's more at risk and who's feeling the pinch more significantly? Yes, it is definitely the lower income individuals, but high income individuals are targeted as well as the lower income individuals come under pressure. And the indebtedness, unfortunately, is across the board. Uh, we are seeing it in short-term unsecured lending. We are seeing it in larger amounts unsecured lending. We are seeing it in vehicle and uh, even home loan type lending. Uh, some of the highest delinquency rates are in store cards. I mean, there more than 40% of individuals are over-indebted, unfortunately. But we are seeing a shift in lending towards high-income individuals, especially with new regulations that enforce affordability guidelines on credit providers. The National Credit Act was a, obviously a step in the right direction, Jakubus, but every time I go to a shop now, and it doesn't matter what type of shop it is, they say, have you got a loyalty card, have you got this card, have you got that card, etc. And before I know it, I'm f almost feeling guilty that I haven't got one of these cards. Uh, I mean, there are some that uh, reward you, but on the other hand, they want you to have one of their cards. This is one of the uh, areas where you get your data, but there's a whole list here, how CompuScan collects data, which includes, and it goes on and on and on. Is it all official? Do you have to buy lists? How does CompuScan work? There's <laughs> quite a few questions in there. Yes, but, yeah. yes. Let's talk we about how get, you get your data first of all. We get data from credit providers all over South Africa. It's more than 4,000 different credit providers and we have about 300 million accounts of which about 80 million are open and active and we get updates on them every month and opening accounts and closing accounts is notified uh, or gets us notified on a daily basis. So there are a myriad of different credit providers providing all kinds of information to us. We get information from courts, we get information from the Deeds Office, yes. CIPC, um, yeah, and that is updated regularly. But it is a, a challenge to maintain data quality. But just like the Constitution is the best way of looking at the law, a credit bureau is the best way of looking at a person's information. And in order to build your credit record, it's not necessarily uh, needed to get a store card. You can get a multi-choice account, uh, you can get a telecom account, all of that helps you to build your credit profile. Yes, indeed. As I, talk, as I mentioned earlier, the National Credit Act was a step in the right direction, but then yes. seem, people seem to freeze. The lenders, particularly the banks, uh, seem to freeze and say, well, I've got to work out what this NCA uh, means. But they now seem to be loosening up again. We're not going to get back to the bad old days from the data that you're collecting, are we? No, we're not. Uh, there were new regulations enforced earlier this year on the 13th of March that forces all credit providers to do comprehensive affordability checks. So that prevents reckless lending and reckless borrowing because both are a problem. And then last year there were new amendments to the National Credit Act released as well, which also govern the use of data. So we won't get back to the battle dates. And anyway, it's not part of a good sustainable business model to do reckless lending. Mm. Yeah, just to get your feedback as well, you mentioned the regulatory changes that we've seen to or in order to protect consumers and creditors, but initiatives like the tax-free savings accounts, are, are these moving us in the right direction, hopefully, to change South African consumers' behavior into a, a, a saving nation? Yes, it's definitely a step in the right direction, even though it's more aligned to savings than debt. Um, but it's getting people incentivized to save. It's getting people incentivized to pay back their overdue accounts. And the new regulations are doing that because if you have paid up your adverse account, so adverse is an account that has been handed over,
that has been written off where an asset has been repossessed or where a credit facility has been revoked. If you've paid up that account, that information, the fact that it's adverse, is then removed from the credit bureau. So that gives people incentive as well. So it's all about providing the right incentive base for the right behaviour. Jakubas, thanks very much for popping in this lunchtime. That's Jakubas XT and Senior Data Analyst at CompuScan.